Um, there are some new uh, photos up, and I'm just going to uh, demo some of the uh, changes that have made their way in there. So um, I haven't talked about it, I, I don't think, in a video, but um, something that I did was add a new type of animation uh, for Samurai Showdown 2. So, so, so basically, there are different types of animations uh, in this program. So there, there's texture-based animation, meaning that an animation sequence is basically just changing the texture. And um, there's you know a palette animation type where it's basically a sequence of palettes that you change. That's like when a character gets burned and it switches between you know like a red and a, and a black palette. Um, and so I've added a new type of uh, animation to the game, w which I'm just calling like a position uh, animation. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of like a keyframe sequence, and it's pretty useful for uh, Samurai Showdown 2, but I'm also leveraging it in uh, Final Fight now. And so basically what this lets me do is um, when characters are grabbed, for example, um, and uh, they absorb uh, like projectiles or, or, or you know attacks. Uh, it basically, I can make the character jitter, you know, or you know, kind of like brace when they're hit by a projectile. To, so, so you really feel that kind of chunky feedback when uh, you're, you're grabbing somebody and they get hurt. And, and because the position animation is unique from the texture animations, you can basically have an animation going on at the same time, uh, you know, you know uh, independently from the position animation. Um, okay, so, and another thing too, I'll, you know, that I'm just gonna show now also is, um, I added uh, a more granular type of uh, Hurt Collider for the game. And so, so before, friendly fire was pretty much this on or off. You know, you know for example, like Eddie's bullet, uh, you know, had just like the friendly flyer, fire to true flag on it so that, uh, you know, if he shoots his gun and one of the enemies is in the way because friendly fire is on, you know, it'll also hurt the enemy. Uh, but something that I always wanted to do in the game, uh, I wanted to really reward people using the knockback move. Um, uh, you know, in, in, in like higher skill scenarios. So, so basically, uh, if, if uh, Belger shoots an arrow at you or Eddie shoots a bullet at you and you knock it back at him, you know, I really wanted that to feel rewarding and, and satisfying. But, but see, here's the problem, though. Um, because the bullets all had friendly fire on, um, let, me, let me see if I can visually demonstrate this. Um, I'm gonna get my ass kicked here, but so okay. So if you knock back a bullet, uh, and and Eddie's fired three bullets, the the, the problem has always been that um, even if you knock back a bullet towards Eddie, because the other bullets, you know, can cancel each other out, you can't actually get the bullet that you knocked back, back to him to really punish, you know, the enemy that, that you did this on. And so, so basically this more granular Hurt Collider, what it does is it allows me to set Hurt Colliders to say, friendly fire is on, but also this thing is invulnerable to other enemies, friendly fire, w which gives me the ability to do things like if you knock back a bullet or an arrow, that bullet or arrow can essentially just cut through the rest of the stuff because uh, and, and, and get back to the attacker because it's essentially invulnerable to the other enemy's attack. So, so you see like th this uh, bullet that I knocked back? See how it's just piercing through? It's just, it just pierced through all the other bullets that, that Eddie shot and got back to him to punish him. And, and it's the same concept, you know, with other things like uh, like Belcher's uh, arrow, and so so that really allows you to have this satisfying response to you know the the, the boss's ability, um, and so uh, and here let, let me let me see if I can just uh, oh crap getting getting rocked but. See, 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 see how it just kind of cuts through. 
it just kind of cuts through all the other bullets. Yeah, it's really satisfying, you know, to, you know, to get that to get that in there. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, let, okay, and so, so, so now I, I'm going to uh, demonstrate the jitter uh, you know, position animation. So, so I'm grabbing Jay here, and now when Eddie moves over to shoot me, look at this really nice, satisfying jitter. See, it's just, it's really good, man. It's chunky, and and and, and what's great is. You know, like some grabbed objects actually have independent animations. Like, for example, when you're um, grabbing Jessica, you know, she kind of struggles a little bit. Some of the characters have like a little struggle animation. And because the position animation is unique and can happen at the same time the um, uh, you know, other animations are going on, you know, the character can you know, be cycling through its different textures and at the same time be jittering independently. And it just, you know, it's really satisfying, looks really good. Uh, and so it's like, okay, so, so now I have this like really nice chunky feedback for things like, um, you know, when you're, uh, you know, grabbing on, you know, to, to objects, but, um, uh, the, the, this also kind of opened up for me. It was like, you know what, something I was considering doing for a long time and you know, I didn't do it, uh, but, but, you know, it was time. And so that is, um, you know, since we have these really satisfying, you know, you're really satisfying, you know, feedback uh, now, um, I I've added the ability for uh, enemies uh, that are grabbed to be hit by other things. So, so you see, like if I, uh, so Hagger's grabbing bread, and if I, if, and, and if uh, I, I attack him with, uh, you know, Guy, you're going to get that feedback. So, so 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 now, so now you can have that really nice stuff where, you know, um, uh, you know, so somebody somebody's being grabbed and uh, uh, you know you, you you can get that uh, you know really nice um, oh, oh crap I'm trying to control t too many things here at once but so yeah and and so and, and so so there are some kind of complicated rules for this too where. So, um, for certain things like uh, projectiles, um, uh, when um, a when, when you're when you're grabbing somebody, and a projectile, uh, you know, hits you, basically use it as a human shield. It resets your grab timer, so you can just kind of you know, you know, hide behind the the, the corpse effectively. But because I didn't want people to basically just like, you know, pick up a boss, for example, with, uh, you know, Hagger, and then just the other players basically just, you know, you know just, just punch him in the back until he dies. Um, when, uh, when, when normal, you know, like melee attacks and, and so on, uh, you know, hit grabbed enemies, it doesn't reset the grab timers, so they will drop uh, the, the enemy. Um, yeah, so, you, you know, that, 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 that's, uh, you, you know, that's there. Uh, uh, so in any case, um, you know, so, so, so that's kind of like the position animations and kind of like the, the new and improved um, stuff there. Now, Samurai Showdown 2 obviously has, um, you know, the concept of, uh, you know, like the rage meter, uh, you know, where, where uh, you know, as your character gets hurt, uh, you know, the meter builds up and they increasingly get angry and then the you know, palette changes and their skin gets red. Okay, so something that I always wanted to do with, with, with this game and like uh, you know, that, I, that I already did for Samurai Shadow 2 that I brought back into Final Fight. So historically, Abigail's Enrage has always had a limited number of angry palettes. You know, essentially, when Abigail transitions from his normal skin color to his, uh, you know, heart attack, uh, red flush color... Um, th there are like th that transition. There are only actually seven different, uh, uh, you know, palette changes for for him to go from his normal skin to his red skin, and you know, which kind of sucks, right? And so, uh, basically, even though it was like fucking insane, um, I actually re you know structured all of the uh, uh, Abigail sprites um, so that they're compatible with the new pixel shader that essentially allows me to. Uh, you know, change the, the color of his skin independently from his, from you know other uh, pixels in his sprite, uh, with basically infinite smoothness. 
you know, essentially the more frame rate you have, the smoother his transition will get now. And, 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 w and what's really cool about this, like I'll show you kind of the different side effects and like how fucking awesome it is. But so, so of course, like, you know, if I just enrage him, see, see how he just, you know, whatever, just changes, right? But, but you're going to notice though that, um, like how smooth, see, look, look how smooth that transition is when, 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 when he goes from angry back to, uh, you know, his normal skin color. Um, because basically, depending on your refresh rate, it's just going to be infinitely smooth. And, and the other thing that's, that's really awesome is that um, because this uh, skin, uh, you know, change is now independent from, uh, uh, you, you know, like uh, everything else, uh, essentially... Um, his, his skin, you know, can now change for any one of his animation frames. So, for example, like, you know, if, if um, uh, you know, he's enraged and he, and he gets uh, knocked down, you know, you, you'll, you'll notice that, um, uh, you see, see, see that, for example, like his skin changed while he was jumping in midair. And, 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 uh, and see here how his skin is going to change when, see how it just faded while he was on the ground. See, basically, during different frames of animation, you're going to see his skin just smoothly change from, from his, you know, between, back and forth between his flushed and normal, uh, you know, skin palette. And, uh, and I don't know if you noticed, you know, yet, but um, I can really, like, make it explicit on the uh, character select screen. Notice how fucking crazy this is. See, see the cursor, you know, you know, over Abigail? And then look at in the bottom left hand corner of his portrait. See, his portrait skin is actually in sync with his sprite. And so when you're playing the game, you'll actually notice that, that his character portrait in his energy bar is actually synced up with his skin because it's all dynamic now. Um, and and I, I might make a more you know detailed uh, video later about how it works, but 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 essentially what's going on is um, I have like a special palette for his kind of like, you know, so-called target, uh, you know, skin color. And um, basically the pixel shader essentially compares his current skin colors palette with that one. And it basically just smoothly using floating point, uh, you know, increments, uh, just smoothly transitions, you know, from one to the other. And, and, and like I said, like a YouTube video can't, it can't illustrate how awesome it is. Like if you actually, you know, play this on, you know, like 144 hertz plus monitor. Like it's so fucking smooth. It looks so goddamn good, and uh, and so this is just kind of like a sneak preview of how the um, uh, you know rage um, uh, you, you know enraging of characters is going to look in Samurai Shodown 2 because it's the same principle. You know, I can basically just you know smoothly, infinitely smoothly, dynamically change the skin color of all the characters, and and it's because behind the scenes. You know, as insane as as insane as this fucking was, I actually went to the extent of when I'm processing these graphics, you know, you know, for the games format, I actually went through and, and set it up so that the, the the program that processes the images actually tags every skin pixel with a value so that it knows that that, that this is a skin. And is therefore subject, you know, to the you know the pixel shader manipulation to be able to independently, uh, you know, change it uh, from the rest of the pixels. And so I don't even need a separate sprite. It, it all happens in a single sprite. Uh, and, and and what's and what's really cool about this too is it's like you know all this extra shit, right? Um, it's actually faster than it was before and uses ES, you know, less video memory because because there are technically fewer textures now. Essentially, you don't even need. Uh, you know, fewer, um, uh, you know, uh, textures uh, for, uh, you, you know, like the, I mean, you don't even need separate textures anymore for different, you know, like pain states or, or, or different, uh, you know, skin, uh, you know, enraged states for, for the character because cause it's all just, it, it all happens dynamically now. Um, and, and so, okay, so so also uh, another change that's related to Samurai Shodown 2 is, um, so... There's like the concept of linking animations, um, you know, basically depending on the animation frame that you're in, uh, you, you know, in different contexts, you can link from like one animation to another. So I've incorporated this back into, into Final Fight and, and my test bed you know, for it is, you know, Abigail. And so, so as an example of the linking, so, so Abigail, when he charges, right, if, you, if, you, if you're charging and you press the pickup button, you know, he does this kind of sliding pickup. Well, so basically now um, you can actually link 
uh, that ability into a tax. And so, so for example, like if you if you charge, and, you know, and, and you go to you know slide and pick something up to try to pick something up, and you kind of commit to it, but then you see that you know there's like an object flying at you, or somebody's about to hit you. If you press the weak or strong attack button, that will now actually chain into um, an attack. Um, and uh, and so so this is basically what it looks like. See, he, he slides, and then see, you can just chain into that attack. Um, so it's just kind of like a test bed, you know, you know, for that feature. Just, just a little thing, but you know, it's a nice feature. But um, yeah, and so I mean, you can check out, you know, like the the the, the release notes, you know, but like other stuff that you know, made its way in. But um, Basically, there have, I mean, actually, like, shockingly, I don't know, somehow I keep finding ways to add, like, tons more shit to this game, but uh, th th there, there is, like, a lot of other kind of, I'm not going to go through all of it, but there's some nice stuff, too, where, like, um, uh, Belger actually, you know, drops his uh, crossbow now when, when you enter phase three of, of the last fight, and, and it better visually represents what is supposed to be happening there. Uh, because cause that was actually kind of my intention, you know, originally is that, you know, that's why he doesn't, you know, he basically just kind of crawls around on his third phase because he's supposed to be disarmed. That's why he doesn't shoot you anymore. And and so now you actually will, you know, see him drop his uh, crossbow. Uh, and, and, and there's just been like a ton of just like little, you know, tiny tweaks uh, for things that I probably don't even, um, you know, remember. Um, but but yeah, I, I, I'm pretty proud of this version. Like it's, it, it's... It's becoming a very polished, you know, you know, really, really nice little game. Um, so, yeah. So enjoy that.